Well, good morning. It's Friday morning and my name is Gordon Hickson and well done for being with me during this week as we've looked at awakening the leader within you. You know, it's, it's been a really wonderful thing just to unpack what is kingdom leadership? How do we actually train and disciple people? How do we uh, end up on this journey? How do we get through this journey of discipling these kingdom cultures? And how do we create this Jesus culture within us? You know, today I want to end with this, about some of the core choices. And I want to talk about 10 choices we make, which really cement the leader within us. They're very important choices that I've had to find in my life. So let's just pray. Father, I pray that today you'd really help us to seal this and cement the leadership that you've been growing within us. And let revelation come in these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Moses, as he was doing a transfer, he was transferring and speaking to the next generation. He said in Deuteronomy 30, famous words, verse 18 to 20, he said, This day I'm calling the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. You see, it's that choice. Choose life. It's that choice which really shapes us. We're tested through the choices we make. And here are 10 simple choices that I know that I've had to make and that have sealed and cemented something within me. So number one is we've got to choose never to be offended. You know, you probably discovered, like me, that God often offends our minds to reveal what's really in our hearts. You see, see that with, with dear David, <laughs> living with Saul. He could have been offended. When God struck down Uzzah when he was trying to bring the ark back, he could have been offended. When Shimei began to start cursing him, he could have been offended. But he chose not to be offended. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 19, that an offended brother or sister can be more impregnable than a fortified city. That means that offence can lock you up or me up in an invisible shell. And we've got to be very careful because family can be offensive to us. Friends can be offensive. Church can be offensive. Leaders can be offensive. But God also can be offensive. You see, because Jesus is the rock of offence. He's not going to change. We have to change. I have to change. You have to change. So we've got to get used to this and make a decision and a choice never to be offended. Even with second-hand offense, don't allow yourself to be offended on behalf of somebody else. That is dangerous. I remember when I was almost taken out at first post when I started the mission life in Malawi. I was called to uh, summoned by a whole tribunal of nine different church leaders and I was literally ripped to pieces and told that they were going to throw me out of the nation because they didn't like the size of our ministry. Uh, I was going to organise a campaign for Reinhard Bonnke. We went on to have the most extraordinary national revival with thousands and thousands of people coming to Christ. But I went on to my next nation of Kenya, totally offended. Now God spoke very clearly to me and he said, if you don't fly back to Malawi and apologise to every one of those nine men and get rid of that offence, you will wander around the wilderness of offence for the rest of your life. I knew it was true. That moment and that decision was a defining moment in my life. I flew back, I did it, and I became a peacemaker. I became a reconciler. That changed something in the whole of my character. Number two, we've got to choose to be willing to look a fool for Christ. <laughs> to look a fool for Christ? Well, my Bible says that we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel. And the sad thing is it's very easy in families, in family situations, and in business and community, to be ashamed of the gospel. We've got to be willing to own it. Be proud of it. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Be willing to look a fool for Christ. I remember David, he danced in front of the altar when he messed up and got offended with God uh, because of Uzzah getting killed. He got right with God and he danced and danced. He was willing to look a fool. But We've got to make a choice. No religious facades. Because, you see, pride 
and the fear of man can make us hide behind this professional facade where people, they see the exterior, but they don't really know the real person inside. Really important. Don't hide. Be in the light. Just be willing to look a fool for Christ. I had to come to that decision. You heard my story about how I went through a nervous breakdown in the army. I had PTSD, 18 months, couldn't work because four of my soldiers got blown up in a, in a bomb, uh, self-controlled uh, detonator. And it was, it was horrific during that time, just having to cope with all that was going on me. But finally it broke. I lived free for 18 years, went into business. I was a business director. I was international crusade director for Rana Bonke. I had everything went right. Then I became a pastor. I was just trying to get hold of a, a thousand seater auditorium in Watford and everything went wrong. And I put my faith on the back burner and felt wounded. Into the gap came the fear and suddenly I began to discover panic, panic, panic. All of those same panic attacks began to come back. And God was very strong with me. He said, I want you to, he said, I want you to go and apologize to your whole church that you have allowed yourself to go back into fear. I wouldn't do it because I didn't want to look a fool for Christ. But after three months, God compelled me out of my seat and he said, do it now. And I stood up and I told people what was going on. And I was almost killed in the rush as they rushed out, laid hands on me and just commanded that fear to go out of my life and all that panic to go. I was instantly set free. But what was more significant was that everybody around the church, in their, all the house groups were willing to look a fool, to share their stuff, to share and be accountable. You know, in my last church, we made sure that all the, all the guys would be in small accountability groups so that we made sure that we didn't just hide things, that we could actually own stuff. So be prepared to look a fool for Christ. Then thirdly, linked to this, very similar, is choose to be transparent. Nothing must be hidden. Don't compromise with the flesh. Be ruthless with areas like lust and uncleanness and anger, bitterness, fears, rejection, pride, jealousy, all these things. Even the sexuality, be pure sexually. Even in marriage, make sure that that is a, 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 a clear decision and choice in your life. You see, you'll probably remember the story of David trying to take over Zion, it was the Jebusites that just challenged him, you won't get in here. They mocked him, said, you won't get in here. All of us had these little ites, I call them, the ites, little areas of shame, little areas of fear, which just mock us and say, you'll never get rid of me. You'll never get rid of me. Let me tell you, by the Spirit of God, every one of those ites can be dealt with in my life, your life and my life. Power of God. The blood of Jesus can cleanse every single thing if we choose to come into the light. So we've got to realise that these ites are time bombs. If we don't reveal them, they're like time bombs and they can explode at very inappropriate times. And you can be ashamed and Christ can also be mocked because of the things that you do. Now, beware, especially as leaders, even missionaries. Stay in the light. 1 John 1, 7, stay in the light. Be transparent because that's where the blood of Jesus can cleanse every area of sin and shame. Then number four, choose to never give up. That's the church one. Never, 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 never give up. We've got to get up again. You see, leaders will fall. We all fail. We all fall. But leaders just get up again. We don't give up. You see, it's during these times that you and I will learn grace. We learn how to great, get grace for ourselves. We learn how to get grace for other people. Everybody fails, but leaders just know how to get up. So David messed up. He had lust, he had murder, he had deceit. You know, but Psalm 51 shows his utter brokenness and repentance. And you see, God even turns our failure into his purposes. You know, how is it possible that David's failure, Bathsheba, would give birth to Solomon, one of the greatest kings? God is amazing and so gracious. So don't hide and make excuses. Just be vulnerable. Learn to lead with a limp and be gracious to people. 
Then number five, choose to think the best of everyone because people are not your enemy. You see, every leader has a potential, Absalom. You may well feel betrayed, but some of your spiritual leaders, your spiritual children, may well, they may well desert you. They may well betray you. It's painful. It is one of the deepest testings of your heart, but you've got to go through it. You've got to allow the Spirit of God to work deeply in your heart. I've been through it. You see, the strange thing is that every Judas and every Absalom thinks they are right. Do you hear that? Every Judas, every Absalom, everybody who's betrayed you, they thought they were right. So I've learned that it's better to be reconciled than to be right. Just realize people are not your enemy. Just think the best of them and get reconciled. Number six, and I'll be quick, we've got to choose loyalty and faithfulness. You see, there's a subtle deception, this Absalom deception, which happens with leaders particularly who love other people. Because if you love other people, if you are dislocated relationally from your senior leader, you can end up drawing people to you. That's what happened with Absalom. He was dislocated in his relationship with his senior leader. That can happen in family. It can happen in business. It can happen in the community. You've got to make sure that these relationships are healed. We've got to always speak loyalty, speak faithfulness. Otherwise, you'll end up stealing people's hearts and you'll end up hurting a lot of people. Remember what Proverbs 27, 21 says, that man's heart is tested by praise. Yes, it's a test to want to be king, but it's also a test when everybody else wants you to be the leader. Don't give in to that. It is dangerous. I've run out of time, but we also need to choose number seven, humility. Number eight, brokenness. Number nine, we've got to choose delegation. And number 10, we've got to choose generosity. Humility, brokenness, delegation, and generosity. You see, pride will keep you from all of these. We see it in David's life in 2 Samuel 24, when David decided to count his mighty men and soldiers. And he, ah, oh, he made a mistake because he was counting in his own strength. It's a wicked thing, Hosea says, to count in your own strength. We've got to be humble. We've got to be, we've got to just let that pride go and allow humility to come. Let me pray with you. And I want to pray with you from Solomon's, sorry, David's words to Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 2. You know, David was speaking to the next generation. I feel I'm speaking to you as a next generation of leaders. Come on. Father, I pray that they will be strong. I pray for you that you will be strong in your faith. I pray that you would show yourself a man or a woman of God. I pray that you will do what he says and that you will be gripped by the fear of God. I pray that you will be compelled by the love of God and that you will run and as if to win and that you will never, ever, ever give up because there is a leader in you. Do you know, Father, I believe that leadership is being awakened. Father, I believe that something extraordinary is happening at this moment. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would cement the leader in that person right now and they would know something has happened in me. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, as I finish, I believe that only history will show the impact, the thousands and thousands of lives that will be impacted by your life as you choose to awaken the leader within you. So God bless you. Come and join us tomorrow as Rachel and Helen have a conversation about the whole area of leadership. And then on Sunday, Rachel's going to pick up the, the baton again and begin to share the prophetic landscape of what she sees in this time of July. God bless you. Have a great day.